weeks in taking the test, specifically reading, science, and then uh, Friday will be math. Now, on math, I'm, I'm going to break it down in math between a couple of different portions, okay? For instance, there's some of us in here that we've scored a 16 or a 17 in, on the ACT, and we just need a few more points, whether you're going to qualify for an athletic scholarship or whether you're going to qualify so that you don't have to take a remedial class. You just need a couple more, okay? So we'll talk about that approach. Maybe you've got a 24, and you are so close to that first level of scholarships. Maybe you need 25 or 26. Okay, we'll talk about how to approach that. Maybe you've got a 29, and you need two more points to get to a 31. We'll talk about how to approach that. So if it applies to you, obviously listen. If it doesn't apply to you, all right, go ahead and, and take advantage of the opportunity to go ahead and use that time to study. If you want, listen, all kidding aside, if you want to use this time to look up your Pareto account on your phone and start working through some of that stuff during this time, that's fine. Doing the quizzes, okay? What I can't have is I can't have you listening to the videos, stuff like that while we're teaching. Now, once we get past this week and next week, we got fall break. When we get back from fall break, I'm going to be very, very specific with math. Okay? I've got it broken down. The first Tuesday after fall break is going to be math questions 1 through 15. I'm going to work with you on how to approach those without using a calculator. Why? It speeds up your ability on taking the test. If you can do it without a calculator, then that will help you a bunch. They're outstanding. So they understand what's expected of them. They're great coach. Okay, so we've got, uh, sorry, that's, that's going to be question 1 through 15. That's basically pre-algebra and some beginning algebra. Then we're going to do questions 16 through 30 on that Friday, and then we're going to go ahead and piggyback the following week, which is going to be the week right before the test, and we're going to hit the last 30 questions of the math exam. Okay? Um, tomorrow, Thursday this week, Lab 103 will be open if you want to go in. Coach Weeks is going to make that available. If you want to go in and use that time to hit up any of that Pareto stuff and study, he's, he's going to have that open. I will have passive available. Now, there's only 30 computers in there. It's first come, first serve. Okay, so that's up to you. But if you notice, most of that Pareto stuff you can do all at home anyway. Okay, so it's, it's really up to you as far as what you're going to invest in as far as getting that, that uh, test up. Okay, so any questions before I start hitting the, the high points on this stuff at all? Okay, I'm going to turn this off, and, and if you need it back on, let me know. Okay, so if you've not added me on Twitter yet, go ahead and get that written down. At Coach Pete. This Coach Harris. You know what? I can send someone down. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this. Okay. At Coach PT91. All right, so when we're talking about the, uh, the approach to the reading, okay, first and foremost, you want to remember they're not going to give you a piece of crap to read. They're going to give you something that's well written, okay? So take advantage of that fact. You getting this, Brent? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's say, for instance, we're looking at one of the portions where they have uh, an excerpt from. Uh, I don't know, not a book, but something that would be like an essay. So we've got five, five paragraphs as an example. Now, if I could tell you a way that you could eliminate about 50% to 60% of your reading time, how many of you think you'd actually do better on the reading portion? Absolutely. Then you can focus on finding the answers. So that's my goal with this. I want to give you a strategy on how to eliminate about half of the reading time. So we've got a five-paragraph essay. Now, go back to your class with Marlad or whoever you had last year where they really hit you up on creative writing and doing things in an MLA way. All right, the things that they're going to hit are this. You're going to have five key areas in each essay or in each paper. You've got a topic sentence. You've got a transition sentence. They're both part of the first paragraph, right? You've got that one that's going to lay out for you. In this paper, you're going to do this, 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 and this, right? And then the, the transition sentence gives you some nice little transition to get to the next three paragraphs. 
These three are called the what? Body. Very good. So we got the body paragraphs. Now, in the first paragraph, okay, typically this first little portion right here is a catch. Okay? My, my, my dad one time taught a, a, a Sunday school class for a bunch of people that are like 60 to 80 year olds, and he said, so next week, I'm going to teach on sex in the 80s. That group of people, he said the next week they had the biggest Sunday school class they'd ever had. Okay, that's not what he taught on, but they all showed up for Sunday school. So anyway, the idea is you're going to have a catch right here, okay, to get your attention. Is there really anything in it about the whole thing? Eh, not really. So you don't really even need to read it. Maybe the first line. Go to the topic, go to the transition, read that because that's telling you what the meat of the paper is all about. Now, go to the body. First two lines there are the first opening sentence. All right, that's going to be an intro sentence for the rest of that paragraph. Read that. Don't read the rest of it. Skip it. Read this right here. Skip the rest. Read this right here. Skip the rest. And then why does the conclusion paragraph exist? It exists to restate what you just did, right? What you just read. Okay, do we need to read all of the conclusion? No. Not at all. You're wasting your time on a test like this. So go down here to the bottom, read that last final statement that sums it all together. It ties everything up, all that good stuff. Now, what have we done here? We've eliminated about 15 to 20% of this one, about 80% of this one, about 80 uh, Look, I've cut out 50% of what you have to read. Now, here's the deal. If you don't practice this and you just show up on October 22nd, having not practiced this and you try it, it ain't gonna work. You need to practice it two or three or four times beforehand. Okay, there's scads of practice tests available. And as a matter of fact, before we're done today, when I'm done teaching about this, I'm gonna find out how many of y'all want a complete practice test. I'll make hard copies for you. And if you wanna take them, get them back to me. I'll grade them or I'll show you how to grade them. Doesn't bother me at all. Okay, this is an important enough deal for y'all. All right, so we've eliminated 50% of what we have to read. Now, what do we do with that important information? Hold it back here and I have it for just a minute. So we got seven questions. Okay, let's say there's six, seven questions on that first reading part. And if I'm going too fast, someone just say, Coach Harris, slow down a little bit. Okay, now we will have the video available. You guys over here, I know y'all freshmen, a bunch of y'all, chuck this up in the back of your mind for two years from now when the money's on the line for you. Okay. So question one and two, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's talk about in September. Let's talk, talk, talk about uh, the transition of uh, the transition of weather in Middle Tennessee. Okay, let's say that this is a paper about that, and the opening paragraph talks about how that you know weather in Middle Tennessee. We're very blessed. We have all four seasons. Yada yada yada. And then it says uh, we're going to talk specifically about the transition of weather from super duper hot to hot and humid to fall type weather. Okay, that's a nice transition sense that lays these out. So this one's super hot. This one is hot and humid. Okay, as we start to get a little bit more, more uh, uh, moisture coming up from the Gulf. And then we get fall weather. Okay, and then finally down here we just tie it all together again. Okay, so question one says, characterize the difference between uh, the first transition of uh, super duper hot to hot and humid. Am I going to need to worry about these two paragraphs down here? Not at all. Am I going to need to worry about the first paragraph? Not at all. I'm going to look at this paragraph and this paragraph. What, what, what my uh, idea of teaching how to do this is, it, it eliminates a lot of the time you spend trying to find answers. Does that make sense? All right, you guys with me so far? All right, I realize it's not necessarily a great feedback uh, type of talk here, but, but anyway, the idea is I can look at this right here and it can point me, boom, that one and that one, or maybe just that one. And now I'm not having to go back and read the whole thing over again. How many of y'all, when you took it before, got very stressed about time? Okay, so if we can eliminate that stress, it will help you to focus on how to better answer the questions. Okay, so I get question one is on that. And let's say question two looks right here. Question three, I can focus right there. Now, again, a thing that they're gonna to try to do a lot of times, they're not gonna waste their effort. If I got four questions and I've really looked at two paragraphs, I got three questions left, where are they gonna look? Probably down here for one or two of them, and then maybe one question about the whole thing. 
Okay, so approach it from a standpoint that says, all right, I'm going to be smart about this, and it's going to make as much sense as it possibly can. Uh, well, anyway, will you hand me a couple of those napkins, please, so I don't have to bend down and pick them up, please, sir? All right, before I erase it, does anybody have questions about this? I realize there's some scribble on here and stuff like that. Anybody have questions about that approach? Thank you, sir. Everybody see over here? I know I'm severely left-handed. I don't want to try to get in the way too much. How many of y'all think this idea will help you a little bit on the reading? All right, so what I would suggest for you is this. Take four times, okay, in the next four weeks, because you got four weeks until you actually take the test. Take four times in the next four weeks where you actually take and set aside eight to ten minutes, okay, and take, what, what is the reading test, 35 or is it 45? 35, okay. So cut it into four, so nine minutes, okay, and then take a portion of a reading test, Set aside that time and practice doing this. Okay, that way you're going into the test having practiced two or three or four times. Okay, you'll be better at it. Okay, and now if you don't, that's fine, it's your choice, but it works better if you practice it. All right, I'm gonna erase it. Anybody need it? All right. Now, how does this transition to science? Well, science does not necessarily give us the information in paragraph form per se. Now there is one, uh, one section on the science, I forget what they specifically call it, but where it's like a compare and contrast. You got uh, different arguments going on for different hypotheses and stuff like that. That's usually done in paragraph form and you do a compare and contrast between them. But let's talk about the, one, the, uh, the other parts which have charts, graphs, uh, things like that. Okay, basically it's information but it's not written out it's pictorial information. So a couple different styles of pictorial information. Let's say I've got something like this. I got a dot graph. Okay, we got you know information like this. So three different types of graphs, charts, things like that. Now the goal that you have for this is I want to get the same information out of this stuff that I did in the reading portion by just reading just a, a certain amount, okay? Key things to look at in this. Always look for a title, okay? Look for a title somewhere in the graph or the chart. A lot of times they have one, they don't always. Also notice what they label it, all right? On one, it may say figure one. On another one, it may say chart one. This one may say uh, figure two, okay? Because a lot of times in the science questions, they refer to it like this. In figure two, blah, 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 okay? So if you know which one is which, then that can very quickly take your, your, your eyesight and your focus from, boom, the question over here to that figure or that, that particular area, okay? Now remember, anytime you have a graph that is horizontal and vertical, has both axes, this is going to be your independent, uh, your independent concept, your independent variable. Okay? If the x-axis is independent, the y-axis is dependent. Okay? Independent down here, dependent right here. Now, <coughs> circle graphs, Circle graphs very often have to deal with percents. Why? It's a little bit easier to see, okay, to be very truthful. Yeah, we know if I've got a circle graph that looks like this right here, and let's say um, of 360 students that took the Pareto that are seniors, this part showed up for health, and this part did not. Okay, could someone make a generalization from that that says about half the students showed up and about half did not? Absolutely you could. You can look at the picture and all of a sudden it's just like, all right, 50-50 are pretty close to it. Okay? Uh, other key things, units. Anytime you have a chart or a graph, you want to look for units. Okay? Particularly if you're dealing with speed, if you're dealing with uh, any sort of uh, acceleration, velocity, things, concepts like that, you want to pay attention to what units they're in. 
Typically, they will have the unit.